Good morning. We welcome you to worship today. My name is John Leffer. I'm the interim pastor here. I've met most of you. Uh, anyway, we're glad to have you here. I would like to call your attention to a couple of announcements that are in the bulletin. We have a Sunday school dinner tonight, and the dinner is for those who've signed up. Now, that includes Sunday school leaders, but it also includes Sunday school members. And I've signed up. I plan to be there. And I've already been asked if my appetite is ready, and I, it is ready, and I hope yours is ready. I understand uh, that we have uh, availability for a few more people to sign up. So if you've not signed up, you're welcome to do that. Just outside this door, uh, you'll see a sign-up sheet, and we have room for about 10 more people. And we'd be glad to have you come and be part of that. We have a special guest speaker. Uh, that you've probably never heard of before. Uh, that would be me. And we have a special music. That would be Lisa. Maria. Did I say Lisa? Maria. Duh. And uh, anyway, we look forward to having you there tonight. A new Bible study class is being started. It's a little bit non-traditional. You'll see that in the bulletin. Don Burkhead will be leading that. And I encourage you to be a part of the organizational meeting uh, that is going to be tomorrow evening at 6.30 or contact Don to find out more about that. Habitat for Humanity, Apostles Build uh, has started. Uh, the, the land, the the ground has been blessed uh, and you will see in the bulletin that if you would like to contribute to this uh, a way you can do that so I hope you will be part of that now may we begin as we worship today morning let us pray our father we're thankful for another day and another day in the life of our church we're thankful for all you bless us with for the rain that you're providing for all your creation lord we're so thankful that we can come adoring you praising you in song and we love you, Lord, that you sent our Savior into the world, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We're thankful for the Bible that, will be, that we use that remind us, and especially the prophets of old, who predicted long years, hundreds of years before Christ came, that he would come and he would suffer and he would die for our sins, that we may have life. Lord, we're so thankful for all you've done. Bless our church as we transition into a pastor. And Lord, guide our thoughts. Lead us. Help us to love each other. 
and may we continue on to do your will. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord today? Are you thankful for your salvation in Jesus Christ? Would you stand? Our opening hymn is 138 at Calvary. turn and greet someone near you. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Our scripture reading today comes from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Hear now this description of Jesus Christ. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we would desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with suffering. Surely he took up our infirmities he carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him Christ, the iniquity of us all. As we prepare to take the Lord's Supper today, we're going to sing hymn number 144 and 146, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Consider again this gift of love.
we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a special prayer need, you just like to lift your hand or maybe stand where you are. We want to share our burdens with one another and lift them before the Lord. Nothing surprises him, but he still wants us to come and ask him to intercede in our problems, in our joys, to be part of our lives in every area. Would you sing, Oh, How He Loves You and Me? with me please father we thank you so much for the love of Jesus Christ our Savior that he gave his life on the cross Lord so that we might have a relationship with you we thank you that his blood covers our sin gives us peace and joy and Lord especially that we can know you our Heavenly Father that we can know your love Lord um, each of us face various burdens, struggles, trials, um, disappointments, joys, and triumphs. Lord, you know each of us so well. We thank you that you know us better than anyone. And Lord, today we just want to lift before you um, those of us who are hurting. Lord, we lift those who are having struggles in their marriage or maybe in another relationship. Lord, would you just come and would you bring strength and uh, Lord, communication. Lord, we pray for those who are having financial struggles. We pray that you might come and that you might show yourself as the provider. Lord, help us to trust you. Help us to trust that your ways are good. And Lord, uh, just come and intercede where we've messed things up. Lord, we thank you for the promise of heaven. And I know there are many who are grieving because they've lost a loved one. Lord, would you come and be the comforter? Your spirit has promised to be the comforter to us. Would you just bring comfort to those who are hurting today? And Lord, those that are sick, that are in the hospital, that are at home, that are struggling, Lord, we know that you are the great physician, and so we just lift these folks up to you. They are on our minds right now. We pray that you might come and that you might heal. And Lord, I pray most of all that you would give us joy in serving you, that you would help us, Lord, to, to just see you as a part of everything that we do because we know nothing we do happens at all unless you give us life and breath. And so, Lord, maybe we, we just be a beacon in this community of folks who truly love you, who aren't perfect, but who serve a perfect Savior. Lord, we thank you so much for your love, and we pray in the precious name of Christ. Amen. Our offertory hymn is 135, Nothing But the Blood. Would you stand and sing joyously?
wonderful place to work. Please use your tithes and offerings to the betterment of your kingdom. In your precious name I pray. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses uh, 26 through 30. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Have you ever been away from home and received a package? Maybe you were in the military. Maybe you were uh, in school. And your folks sent you what I, we used to refer to as a care package. Might have been cookies. That was especially helpful. Might have been something else, but you received a gift. Wasn't it special? A number of years ago, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was part of the resistance movement in Nazi Germany, was imprisoned. He was imprisoned in April of 1943 and there he was in prison for two years and then put to death. He wrote a letter home that said this. It is Monday. I was just sitting down to a dinner of turnips and potatoes when a par parcel you sent me arrived. Such things give me greater joy than I can say, although I am utterly convinced that nothing can break the bonds between us. I seem to need some outward token or sign to reassure me. In this way, material things become vehicles of spiritual realities, I suppose, it is rather like the need felt in all religions for sacraments. We as humans need to be reassured of God's love. We as humans need to be reassured of each other's love. Uh, you heard, of course, the old tale about the woman who said to her husband, you never tell me you love me. And he said, we were married 20 years ago, and I told you then, and I still mean it. Well, you just need to hear that you're loved. You just need some reassurance. And so the package, we don't even know what, contain, what, were, what was in the package that Bonhoeffer received in prison. But the package reminded him that his family loved him. We have a package from home this morning. It is just a little grape juice and bread. It will not sustain us from a physical point of view, but it will sustain us in our soul. It is a package from home. It is a physical reminder that God loves us. It's not the real blood and the real body of Christ, but it's a symbol that reminds us of the body and blood of Christ. Have you ever been away from home and received a package? Do you remember how it felt to get the package? We're sort of on the giving end now. We have family that live in Africa, and we have family that lives in Slovakia. 
We have five grandchildren, two daughters, and two sons-in-law. And my wife enjoys buying gifts for them. I say occasionally to myself, very quietly, guard your credit card, John. She's going shopping again. <laughs> but, but I do love it because she very carefully chooses specific gifts for specific people. I have no idea of anybody's sizes. She knows everybody's size. She knows their taste. She knows what they like. Now, occasionally, you know, granddaughters begin to have a mind of their own, but occasionally she slips up. But nine times out of ten, or maybe more, she hits the nail on the head. And, and they know they are loved because Nana picks out a special gift for them. Now, you can imagine, or you can't imagine, what it might cost to send gifts to Africa. She bought something the other day. And she sent me to the post office. I said, how much are you willing to pay? Well, it doesn't matter. I came back and I said, I paid over $50 to send this little package. She says, oh my, I need to be careful in the weight of what I send. Well, maybe so. But those gifts are precious to family because they are reminders of our love for them. We have a package, a package from home. It reminds us of the extent to which our Lord went. He didn't just pay $50 to send a package overseas. He paid with his blood and with his body and with his life. And because of that, we can have salvation. What a package. What a reminder. Material objects that remind us of much more than they are themselves. They convey deep spiritual realities, heavenly reassurance of God's love for us. Communion is a remembering. It is a reminder. It looks back at what happened on the cross it looks ahead to that heavenly banquet that we will share in heaven. And so it's a kind of an in-between meal. And I don't mean it crass to say it. It's kind of a tide you over, okay? It'll hold us over until the real thing happens in heaven. It's time of looking inward and realizing none of us measure up, but it's a time of confessing and realizing that we can measure up because he measures up for us. It's a time of bowing down to a different altar. It is a little bit countercultural, actually. As Americans, we bow, bow down to all kinds of altars. Consumerism is one. You take a five-year-old to church and they don't know what to do. You take a five-year-old to Toys R Us and they're at home. Perhaps that tells us something 
about the altar we bow down to. By five, a child has been educated that life is made better by the accumulation of stuff. And so what we have here is a package from home that's a little bit countercultural, and it reminds us that what we surround ourselves with, the stuff we surround ourselves with, is just really pretty meaningless when you compare it to this package from home. Now, last Wednesday night, we had a covered dish potluck supper. And some of us ate more than we needed to. And it could have sustained us for a good long while, maybe a day or two. But of course, we were back again at the next meal to eat again. The amount of food we're going to eat in a few minutes is just almost nothing. Just a little cup, just a little sliver of bread. It will not sustain us from a physical point of view, but as I've already indicated, it will nourish our souls because it is a reminder of the great gift that God gave to us. This package he sent in the form of his only son to live to show us how we could live to die to give us life everlasting. And so in a few minutes, I will say, take and eat, take and drink, and be reminded of this love God has for us. May we pray. God, sometimes we come with clenched fists in power. But we come to communion with empty hands, empty hands, hands outstretched, ready and needing to receive this gift, this package from home. We come today opening our hearts to you asking you to forgive us so that we could in some small way be worthy to receive this package. Forgive us, we pray. And even as I say this, I realize we have been forgiven. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.
Will the deacons come now to prepare for the Lord's Supper? I'd like to read. Uh, I'd like. Is it going to work? I'd like to read Paul's version of that first Lord's Supper as he heard it and told about it. He says, "For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread." And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. May we pray? Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we take this bread, may we do so in remembrance of the body of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. May this bread remind us of your presence, and reassure us of your love. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.
What a gift. This is the body of Christ for you. Take and eat. Paul goes on to say, in the same way he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May we pray. Eternal God, we ask in the name of your son Jesus Christ that you would bless and sanctify this cup for all of us who receive it. As we drink this cup, may we do so in remembrance of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. May it remind us and reassure us of your love and your presence in our lives. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.
What a gift. What a package from home. The blood of Christ shed for you. Drink all of it. It is our custom to have uh, a hymn. It is our custom to have a hymn of commitment. I know it is our custom to always sing Blessed Be the Tithe. Stay with me. We're going to have a hymn of invitation, a time of commitment. We're, we're then going to have a prayer, a benediction, and then we're going to sing Blessed Be the Tithe. You have a commitment to make. This has been a powerful message that we have received as we have literally ingested, well, figuratively ingested the body of, and blood of Christ. What a gift. What an awesome thing. Perhaps it is a message to which you need to respond to receive Christ, to recommit, to place your life in the life of this church. We're going to sing hymn number 141, The Old Rugged Cross. As we stand, would you come if you have a decision to make? Thank you for your participation. I think we did it without a hitch. You know, you know, we as worship leaders, and all the deacons have helped lead today, we as worship leaders are not center stage. We're just prompters pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that as we have worshipped today, we've had a good choir. I think there are more of them than ever <laughs> since I've been here. And beautiful, beautiful voices. Thank you. <laughs> but, but they're just prompting, okay? They're just pointing. And we had a little extra special from Caitlin. Where'd she go? But she's just prompting, pointing to God. Thank you for participating. One quick announcement before the benediction. I should have made this earlier. Some of you are aware that Susan Fox Shearer died uh, this weekend. Visitation will be Monday, September 26th. 
from 11 to 12, services 12 to 1, it's at Roland Taylor Funeral Home. I know you'll want to be aware of that. Uh, I take the benediction today from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. May we pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.